what? It's not Friday. You scared me. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I should actually sit, sit farther away from the mic when I do that. Hang on. Let me let's see myself going in the red there a second. Okay. Um, welcome. Uh, this I am Brad Jones. This is the gorgeous oh Laura my Luke God. Jones. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I greeted Gino the same exact way. The other day. <laughs> so we might try doing this on Tuesdays now as well. Now the regular show is on uh, Friday, where it's all the main movies that are out and bright ones and Impossible Mission from last week. But uh, you know, maybe we could add something like this on Tuesday as well. And the movie that we're talking about today, <laughs> it fits. It fits right along with that. So we only got one movie going on. So it might not necessarily be like a two or three hour episode, which is something because it took about three hours to watch this movie. <laughs> but before we before we get into that, please subscribe to our channel. We're at youtube.com slash stoned gremlin productions and uh, follow us on Twitter at the cinema snob. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the cinema snob or on Instagram at the cinema snob as well. So please, you like what you see, pass us around, retweet us uh, and throw a subscription our way. We we have our latest snob episode that came out yesterday, which we put up on the Amityville Horror, the original 1979 film. And at the end of that episode, we also threw up a poll that is still going on, and that's going on over on our Patreon page. So if you subscribe to us at patreon.com slash the cinema snob, you can be any tier on there and vote for the poll in the next week's episode. And as you can see, the poll is not over yet, but my prediction was, you know, Godzilla, King of the Monsters in 1956 might win. Didn't think it was going to be until September because it's way too soon for the mm -hmm. melodrama to win. It needs to be in there at least a few more times before the melodrama ends up winning. Although a lot of people in the comments were saying, I know it's going to be until September. I know it's going to be until <laughs> September. It it doesn't look like it. Puppet <laughs> um, Master is pretty close. Yeah, no, it is. Puppet Master is right behind Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla is is pretty much what I thought it would probably be, but uh, who knows? I mean, I've been wrong before, but so far that's the one that's in the lead. Well, you were wrong when it was Windy City. Because... Uh, or not Windy... Was, no, uh, Independence Day. Oh, yeah, oh, well, that was the first one that I did, uh, which was on... The first poll I did, which was... Uh, uh, yeah, an Independence Day themed episode, and I didn't think, I thought the porn spoof was gonna win, but that was the first poll I did, so it's the, oh, well, the porno spoof of Independence Day might win, here's this throwaway 1983 melodrama, Independence Day, that won't win, and it won by a long margin. And that's one of my favorite episodes. The melodramas are turning <laughs> into my favorite episodes, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, uh, vote I for until September. <laughs> I gotta savor those episodes, though, like, uh, it makes it more special whenever they happen. So the first time I threw Windy City in there on one of those polls. I thought it was going to win because Independence Day 83 did, but it took Windy City a few tries and it was totally worth it by the time it came around. <laughs> we only got one movie going on today and that is I... <laughs> I'll talk about this a little bit after we show the clip, but there is a sequel out to the original 1978 I Spit on Your Grave. This just came out, so let's go ahead and look at a clip and we'll be back to talk more about it. Do you think we can get your autograph? Gladly. You're sicker than your mother! Okay, I kinda sorta knew that this movie was happening. This is, if you haven't seen I Spit on Your Grave, I Spit on Your Grave mm -hmm. is a 1978 film I written, written and directed by Mirz Archie. It's a notorious exploitation film quoted by... Too bad Roger Ebert isn't around to see this movie because he often quoted the original I Spit on Your Grave as being the worst movie that he ever saw. Uh -huh. I like I Spit on Your Grave. I mean, it's about as straightforward as, of an exploitation movie as you can get. Well, yeah. Especially of that genre, the rape-revenge genre. It is what it is. It is... The first half of it sets that up. It's a long, brutal sequence that happens in the first half of the film. And then from the second half on, it is revenge. She screws these guys up. And I honestly do enjoy the movie. I get, I get why there's people who don't. Because of the kind of movie that it is. Um, there's even things... I even like the look of the movie as well. I like how it's handled. There is something kind of 
real about some of it in that it does the original film really doesn't have a it doesn't have a soundtrack except for whatever music is playing in the scene like when she's mm, it feels like you're there kind of yeah yeah like when she's like playing the record in that one scene uh she's listening to the like talk radio at one point early on in the movie but it's a movie i like it's a movie i enjoy and plus uh just i forgot to mention this earlier plus if you do donate to our super chat here in, in uh in the chat, uh, we will answer these at the end of the review, like we do in the in the uh, previous episodes as well. So, here's the interesting thing about it: it is such a simple, straightforward movie, and I think it does it fairly well enough. It's a flawed movie. The original, the original, I'm talking mm-hmm. about the original one's a flawed movie, but for its its strengths, I I, I like it. I, I like the movie just fine. Yeah, I've seen parts, and yeah. I've seen your review on it on the snub. Oh, okay. Uh. I've seen parts, and the parts I did see, I did like. Mm. Um, it's a movie I think that's kind of up my alley. Like I like revenge. You would movies. like it. You would... Oh, I've seen parts of it. I just yeah. haven't seen it as a whole. And uh-huh. I like revenge movies, and especially it's shorter, so I like that we'll too. We'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, and also I feel like the revenge parts feel earned, you know, because <laughs> in that movie, yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> sit through about an eighteen-minute gang rape scene in yeah. that movie. <laughs> so, I mean, it's brutal, but oh, I mean, she yeah, gets rape these is guys, brutal. Man, she gets these guys. <laughs> she like locks the guy in the bathroom and cuts his dick off. She like hangs this dude as he's climaxing. Like it's yeah. There's uh, <laughs> there's as far as like death scene death scenes go there's some good money shots in in that movie between the between the dick chopping the axe chopping and everything like what what's it's such a straightforward movie that it's hard to think about the fact that like well it it is a franchise (laughs) yeah i didn't realize how many there were like i didn't know there was a reboot well there's some duplicates here in this still shot but there's there's the original there's even more than it is even pictured here like okay there's the original movie and then there was the remake which wasn't that. or not a reboot a remake so yeah there was a remake of the movie which wasn't great it was kind of the original movie just if you crossed it with saw um mm-hmm. like it's the well, remake being fun the remake was weird i should do an episode on that sometime the remake's weird because the remake comes across less like a rev- i mean it is a revenge movie of course it's the same plot as the first one but the death scenes are so intricate in the remake that it almost comes across like they just pissed off a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's there's some Saw-level gadgetry going on in the remake. <laughs> and there's sequels to the remake, but even... Those I haven't seen. There's at least a few of those. Uh, the, those. Those ones I haven't seen, I don't even know if they really even tie into each other all that much. But even beyond that, there was a movie... Uh, in 92 or 93 that was called savage vengeance that was an early snob episode i did that was a shot on video movie written and directed by uh, don farmer and it was kind of restructured like it was a sequel to i spit on your grave it Mm -hmm. had camille keaton in it again Mm -hmm. and they dub it over to make it look like she's playing the same character (laughs) um it's bad but it gave me like one of my uh favorite pieces of feedback on an episode I've done because I did that episode and then sometime later I did an episode on something else I don't remember what the other episode was but I remember saying um uh this is the worst movie I've ever seen blah blah something hyperbolic like that and the director of uh who's a a nice guy I used to he we used to email back and forth years and years ago I didn't talk to him in a while but Don Farmer who directed savage vengeance like left a comment and said something like wait a minute you said my movie was the worst movie ever having directed that movie i can vouch for the fact that it is <laughs> you didn't, maybe you did tell me this and i just did forgot. i tell you about that maybe i haven't thought about that in a, in a while uh because that, that was an old episode that was for maybe like the first second year that i was that i was doing this show but it, there there's like there's a turkish i spit on your grave <laughs> I did, I did an episode of that. I should re-upload some of these. Like, it would be hard to uh, re-upload the I Spit on Your Grave episode. I'd probably have to cut out the sketch part of it. Um, the Turkish one, I could probably try. I, I don't know. It's it, The rules are a little different than back on the blip days. Uh-huh. So this movie... So you've had all of these movies. You've had um, the, the original. You've had Knock Off sequels you've had the remake and then these sequels to the remake that i think kind of just sort of exist on their own 
And then, so th- here's what this movie is. Now, I saw, I, th- I think I saw a poster for this not too long ago. Or I at least saw that, like, oh, there's some other I spit on your grave coming out. And I think I, when I saw it, I, my first thought was, like, oh, okay, well, this is another in, like, the remake series or something. Because that wouldn't surprise me. There's already a few of those. But, no, that's not what this is. What this movie is, it is a... As the trailer showed, this movie is a direct sequel to the original movie. It is written and directed by Mir Zarchi, who direct who wrote and directed the first one. It's featuring Camille Keaton back as Jennifer Hill reprising her role in the first one. It it is really, yeah, the only official sequel. You couldn't get much more of an official sequel than this. It's the same guy who did the other one. And Mir Zarchi who's like 81 years old now, oh, did this movie. And yeah, because he was in his 40s when he did the first one. Only did like one other movie, I think. If he did... Oh, if, really? Yeah, he did I Spit on Your Grave. He might have done something for television, but he directed another movie in the 80s that was called Don't Mess With My Sister. It was really bad. It was... Uh, I, I watched this years ago. I, I rented it because our video store had it. They had I Spit on Your Grave as well. And that oh, was really? how. I, oh, yeah. That was how I saw I Spit on Your Grave. I rented it. I mean, with that eye-catching box cover that it has and the title. Mm-hmm. And with Don't Mess With My Sister, that's a movie he did that was, like, sold as an exploitation film. It's called Don't Mess With My Sister. Mm-hmm. It's got a guy with, like, a shotgun on it. But the movie is like a when you actually watch the movie, it's just like a family melodrama that happens. I was thinking it, that sounds like it could be a melodrama. Oh, they Trojan horse an exploitation movie. <laughs> that, I don't even think "Don't Mess with My Sister" was the original title, but That's it funny. that way they could make it look really exploitationy and say like, "Oh, from the director of I Spit on Your Grave," and mm-hmm. spray some like blood images on the cover and things like that. I was wildly disappointed when i rented that movie and watched it <laughs> I sh- that one i i should definitely do an episode on that one sometime so here's first and foremost here's what you need to know about this movie um i spit on your grave deja vu is the name of it now okay the plot of it is is that jennifer hill has uh written a book about the events from the first one called i spit on their graves I don't know if in the foreign release of her book, it's called Day of the Woman. (laughs) But, uh, so, the family, she has a daughter who's a model, and the family... She's a, the highest, one of the highest paid famous models in the world. Her daughter comes in, like, they're introduced (laughs) with this lunch date with each other, and her daughter comes in, like... Very exposition-y dialogue going on, like... Her daughter comes in complaining, like, like, oh, gosh, this is just the worst. This modeling's the worst. They're going to pay me $500,000, but I have to shave my head, so I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't like you. <laughs> well, yeah, that was annoying, but she got, I think she got a little bit better as it went on, but. No, 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 it, it, it does. Um, but yeah, she's like, I don't know, I just, I'm sick of being a model. Uh-huh. I'm so this... sick of it. And I mean, yeah, maybe it's. I've never been a model, so maybe it does suck. Sure. So, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. She's uh, been doing it since she was 10, so I oh, guess I'm gonna that get, might suck. I'll get to the timeline about this movie later. But, <laughs> uh, so, the families of the guys who were killed in the first one want revenge on Jennifer. So they abduct both Jennifer and her daughter. And it, it turns into this kind of just revenge game between the two of them. Now, here's what you really need to know about this movie. And it's the craziest thing about this film. It's two and a half hours long. Oh, God. That's yeah. not me. Ex- okay, maybe I'm minorly exaggerating. It's two hours and 28 minutes long. That is how long this movie is. And while part of me is like, hey, you know what? Okay, I guess I can respect that a little bit. Mir Zarchi comes back after all these years, makes a two and a half hour official sequel to I Spit on Your Grave, one of the most straightforward movies of its kind (laughs) this it's amazing how like just easy it is to explain that movie and you can already and you can already kind of get a sense in your head whether or not you might like that movie but the remakes and everything that came after it are so complicated (laughs) yeah for something that is the 
opposite of a complicated well, this, film. This movie's not very complicated. Uh, or there, it, towards the end, it gets a little complicated. <laughs> it's just it's uh, dragged out for way too long. Um, but does this movie need to be two and a half hours? No, it well, doesn't. it's called Deja Vu for a reason. It's the same exact movie, so I can explain the plot. But you'd be really surprised that it's two and a half hour long. But when that, but when the original movie starts happening, that's about 90 minutes into the movie. Because before then, yeah. it's this plot line about the family members, uh, the, the wife of Johnny, who is the ringleader from the first one, the dad of um, Matthew, the mentally challenged guy, and then a couple These of others. two other guys, like some sort of clan. Maybe thing. they're yeah. related to the lesser remembered two from the other one uh, i don't think so uh but they so they abduct jennifer and the daughter and then it's kind of just this chase throughout all of that and, and they've even turned this area that it's in almost into like a texas chainsaw massacre town where everyone who lives in this town is also crazy yeah like they're all out to get revenge over this family it's Basically. one. It's a two and a half hour movie where the only reason it is even longer than a half hour is because it's nonstop sequences of characters who should be shooting each other and don't. That's like, what made me mad the most because uh -huh. there's so many bad decisions made in this movie. Like this movie could have been over. I don't know how much. Like when uh, we'll Jennifer to, we'll Hill. Okay. Well, there's a situation where she could have just escaped and. Oh, that been totally fine, uh, but like I know she has. But no, the movie would have been over in like thirty minutes. I know she has no problem killing, killing people, people who've wronged her, who have abducted, who have abducted her and her daughter. There are several sequences in this movie where everything would be instantly ended if a character just shoots one of the villains. And they and all have a gun. It just keeps going. Well, they all have a gun most of the time too. So like, I don't understand why they don't just shoot each other. She just is like, okay, well, I'm going to go. And, you know, you better not follow me or something. And But obviously they will. They're already crazy. You know that they're going to. Because it's a lot of, like, being written into a corner. It's like they've got to escape for the plot to continue. To get from point the, A to point B. Yeah, yeah. so the only way they can is to, okay, get the weapon. But we can't kill the villains right now. So they're just going to run away and not doing anything about it. Now, this is a two and a half hour movie that is, yeah, it's long for reasons like that. But more so than that, any editor who ha who's worth us all, any, any editor whether you're a first time editor or wildly experienced could easily take this movie and chop an hour out of it because it, it is, you can, you can get like a half hour into this movie and really only about three scenes have happened because every scene is so long. Every scene has 70% dialogue that you could lose. It goes on every scene. It's constant monologuing. Uh, villains all, yeah. constantly monologuing with one another. There are several sequences where they just explain the events of the first movie again. Yeah, there's a lot of not, flashbacks. Yeah, when it's not showing you images of the f uh, flashbacks of the first movie, they'll just, in a monologue, just explain more about what you saw in the first film. Yeah, I wanted to watch the first movie, like, as a whole... Uh, before I watched this one, but yeah. I guess I didn't really need to. Cause oh, no, you already a... saw it with this movie. Yeah, in well, several they, ways. it's explained to me, and there's also a lot of flashbacks that really come out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, that'll kind of just happen. It'll just movie. happen, but it's not really, it's kind of pointless. It'll just show her loading a gun in the movie, like in the first one. They'll show a flashback of Jennifer Hill loading a gun, and I was like, well, meanwhile, I guess, and then it'll, that's it. <laughs> I'm starting out really negative on this but i mean there is some things that i'll say uh, uh, about it uh, like because one that's slightly more positive because one it's like okay i as wrong of a decision it is to make this movie a two and a half hour movie i almost respect it in a way um but that's also vicious i guess uh, yeah um i will say this like the movie you can tell it's a mirzarchi film it's not 
there's no sequences in this movie that are as intense as say like the harmonica sequence from the first film or the part where she locks Johnny in the bathroom and goes down and listens to the record. There's no real cool one liner in it. Like her saying suck it bitch at the end of the movie before like the guy gets his shit torn apart by a boat motor. Um, there's nothing that really that's that level of memorable in this movie, but I can still kind of tell it's the same guy who made it. It it does feel like the director of if the director of I Spit on Your Grave made a movie here in 2019 or whenever this was made, 2018, whenever. Uh that yeah, it would probably look like this. It's not it's not like the difference between like Uli Lamel back when he directed like uh boogeyman and later when he's doing the directive video stuff like his serial killer movies it is not that drastic of a difference excuse me i just started <laughs> sorry it scared oh. me. <laughs> we that start talking about castration and everything i just get a little rumbly in my stomach <laughs> <clears throat> the movie is well made well it's it's not as well made as the first movie, but it's not... Well, there's a budget there. Yeah, say. yeah, yeah. The movie... I mean, it has shots that look like direct shots from the first one. It's it's not drastically below the level of filmmaking from the, from the original one. It, it's not like suddenly you're... It, it's not like you're watching one of those shot-on-video movies like they... that would try to knock this movie off, like... Uh, I spit on your corpse, I piss on your grave, or something mm. like that. Like it's it, it's not like one of those. It's not like looking at like a newly Lamel film, and nor does it even get comedic or meta or anything like that. It is a it's just making a sequel in the same genre as the first one. It's not being self aware. It's not trying to really spoof anything. Like when Herschel Gordon Lewis came back and did like Blood Feast Two, and it was a comedy. And I kind of like that movie, but th this movie doesn't, it doesn't do that. It, it, I will say that like, it, it, I do enjoy the first one. The acting is probably better in this one. I'll give it that. Like mm -hmm. some, some no, of the, the acting, acting was fine. Some of the acting is not bad here. Like it's, it's perfectly serviceable, serviceable for this movie. It's not a polished movie by any means, but neither was the original. Ugh. Yeah. Like there'll be scenes where. They seem like they're in the middle of nowhere, but in the background, you can kind of see a busy highway. Yeah, there's a, there's a <laughs> lot of things that just happen in the middle of, like, the public in this film. And this forest seems, like, really small because they keep uh, running into each other. Yeah. I'm like, okay, how small is this forest? I kept um, cracking up whenever... This is a thing that always drives me nuts in movies whenever this happens. I see this a lot. Not even in just a movie, like a smaller film like this. Even big budget movies, I see this happen. Where it's showing a picture of a character from the first movie and all they've done is just taken a still shot from the first film. That drives me so nuts. Like, why? Like It might be hard to get a photo, I guess. Oh yeah, it's really hard to get a picture of Anthony Hopkins. We need to use a still shot of Hannibal Lecter from the first movie in Red Dragon. <laughs> like anything just like i don't know get something from the b-roll or something i don't i don't yeah. like that it'll have it, it, it i see i see that countless times in movies and it drives me nuts every time it happens with this movie specifically though i think that might be more distracting for you than it would be for me because you've seen i spit on your grave so many times and so I, you I wouldn't recognize yeah. yeah like that wasn't really distracting for me I, if you guys have been watching Midnight Screenings with me, you, you know that I don't like long movies. <laughs> and so I that's the only big complaint I have about this. If it was like 90 or 80 minutes long, I think I would actually really dig this movie. Well, let me get back to the pictures real quick. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So like, I wasn't trying the... to wrap it up. I was just No, saying. no, no. It's okay. Because I... I want to touch on what you're touching on right there too, but I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> Believe me, I you know how ADHD I am. I totally <laughs> like I can. I've got 18 conversations going on in my head right now as we speak. <laughs> Only two of them are about this movie. The rest <laughs> of them are probably still talking about. You okay, honey? <laughs> yeah. The rest. Of, <laughs> the rest ones are probably talking about bright ones. I'm fine. I just need to take my medications off. 
If I pass out, you'll have to carry the rest of the review. <laughs> no. No, oh, no I'm, not ta- I'm not taking care of you. I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> That'd be really funny. No. Yeah, you'll like, be fine. So this was, I kept cracking up every time it happened in this movie. So there would be pictures of Johnny on like his wife's stand. And it's just like a shot from the field scene in the car from the first film. Mm-hmm. And the funniest freaking one, a couple, like one was like Matthew's dad is there. And then there's a picture of him from the scene where he's delivering groceries to Jennifer. But when they find where those guys, where the four guys in the first one are oh, buried, yeah. it's in a regular cemetery. But then just right in the middle, they have these it's like, like planks of wood, these cheaply put black crosses <laughs> thrown in there, just right next to each other as if they're all sharing the same cast. Yeah. Like only like a foot away from each other. So there's just, there's little like pictures of them like in the middle of the crosses like on the like almost like just real cheap pieces of paper they've taped on there and the picture of Matthew is on there that's on there is from the rape scene. It's from the Jennifer POV shot from the gang rape scene with him like Ugh! like that's <laughs> the picture that they use for. But then later on it does show a picture of him that's not like from the movie. Maybe they just found a shot of the actor from around that time. So you had access to this for at least one picture. Well, the picture uh, was like this big though and it was kind of far away so I wouldn't have noticed oh, it. Oh I did. Hardcore I did. But I mean I've seen the original a lot. Um <laughs> so yeah, that was something that was making me laugh. And uh whenever this is like it was reminding me a little bit of uh like Texas Chainsaw 3D where I was having a hard time of nailing down the timeline here. Yeah, because you can explain, I guess. But I, I kept on asking you, like, is, is, this she, the... is she the daughter of the rapist? And I kept and... saying, like, I doubt it, because that would put her at, like, 41, 42 years old. But they kept on implying it, and I was like, well, maybe they just think that, but it turns out she is. No, She's, the... like... 25 26 maybe the actress is like 30 i think and well, she could so as be like... but yeah she's probably supposed to be in her 20s in this movie yeah. so throughout the texas chainsaw 3d was doing things like that where it's like the timeline you've presented me here for this movie that's supposed to be a direct sequel to the first one and texas chainsaw 3d is taking place in the present that means according to this movie the original texas chainsaw massacre is supposed to be like 1998 like, <laughs> sure. And this movie was... I don't know if this movie was supposed to be taking place in the present. It didn't look like it, because it's... I don't remember them using, like, iPhones or anything, but their outfits didn't scream, like, mid-90s or anything. It or... seemed like it's something that was... Maybe this was written, like, 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, yeah. because it's it's not just the fact that they imply the daughter is... Well, they don't imply, they straight up say it. Like, that the daughter is Johnny's, the villain from the first one, which, again, would put her in her... It, it, 40, 40, 41 years old. But even beyond that, like, the villain is the wife, and w- is Johnny's wife, and when she first showed up, I thought it was supposed to be, like, the adult version of Johnny's kid. Yeah, because she looks like she's, like, maybe mid-40s. 50s, something maybe? like that. And if you're... And then Johnny's parents are in this. And the one guy is supposed to be Matthew's dad. And all of these characters that show up should be anywhere between, like, 60 and 80. Yeah. A, a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them maybe in their 70s or something. And so that was, like driving me nuts throughout this movie. I'm like, I, I just kind of kept chalking it up to maybe this is supposed to be taking place like 20 years ago, or maybe it was just simply written 20 years ago. I don't maybe. know. Uh, yeah. Cause I really didn't think that, I think her wa- name was Becky, mm-hmm. the wife of, uh, of Johnny. I can't remember. I think it was Becky, mm-hmm. but, um, she, I thought she might've been like a daughter or a sister or yeah. just someone, uh, and, um, yeah, it, it was kind of weird for me. I, I was kind of getting the relationships mixed up a little bit because those two guys I thought maybe were the sons of them, too. Mm. But I guess they just are tagging along okay. and she has this big hold on them and control over them. Well, <laughs> they, they start they're trying to redo all the relationships and everything from the first movie, because once it gets to a point at about an hour into this movie um they just 
start doing the original film again because there is another gang rape scene involving the daughter this time and then from then on it is just kind of re it from then on it just becomes a remake of the first movie before then it was like all right the family is here for revenge on jennifer and then like i said it just straight up just starts doing the other movie again right down to some of the same pacing like uh uh she goes after the mentally challenged guy who kind of did something similar in the in the in the rape sequence where he like kind of gets her away and she she's still alive and she gets him and then one of them she gets and seduces in a similar very similar with even some of the same dialogue that Jennifer did with Johnny in the first film and then uh it, it involves castration again as well as well and bleeding to death there's a similar sequence with uh her watching like the other two remaining guys them arguing with the wife it just all it, it for, there's a big portion of it where it just starts doing the other movie again but then it keeps going and going and going like the the, the original film actually ends pretty freaking abruptly uh, it's kind of hilarious in how abruptly the original one ends. This movie's the opposite of that. There's like a that. twist and turns that it takes that it like... no sense. It's one of those movies where everyone's deaf. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, like uh, you were talking about this in the movie too, how there are several sequences in this movie where someone... Oh, I'm shot. sorry. I took that literally. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, it's all like the that. actors are deaf. It was distracting. Um, yeah, because there'd be times where this guy i guess is like playing music and uh -huh. the other guy is asking for help and gunshots gu gunshots but then he can hear him like be like oh yeah getting a hand job and he's like oh man are you jacking off and i'm like how do you not hear a gunshot mm -hmm. but he's hearing this guy orgasm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> yeah some of that i could yeah it, it kept doing things like that like later on there are two people who die with a shovel a foot yeah. behind another guy who seems to not hear any of this going on well he's old maybe. I mean, yeah it's like all right maybe i could chalk it up to that a little bit if the movie hadn't done that a couple of times already uh there's also this time where so she's walking around naked um because she was right I mean, after she was yeah no this one no i mean like in the original oh yeah and she kind of walks by this house and I guess they have their laundry out. And I was like, good thing she found jeans that for like fit perfectly on her. They're like form fitting. I was like, I can't even find jeans anywhere that fit that nice on me. <laughs> it's very hard for me to find jeans too. Like my leg size and waist size are not a very good match. That's why I often have to also get clothes when I'm naked in the woods. <laughs> I'm usually tripping on acid, too, when this is going on. When people think they see Sasquatch, it's just Brad. He's just... It's really just me. It's just... One day I'm going to get that filthy animal. Uh, that filthy animal's my husband. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my husband. Don't He's mind going him. going senile just again. throw a poncho on him or something. <laughs> this is a movie that, like, even despite little things like like that it's a movie no that, that that's a really big just no a minor nitpick uh, it was just something i thought was funny this movie would be fine if it were 80 minutes and anyone i i feel like i'm just watch. i feel like i'm watching an assembly cut of this film i feel like this is a the first cut that has gone to the editor and then uh they lost track of time and just released the copy of the movie that only the producers should have seen because easily, you could, anyone could take an hour out of this movie. It, it wouldn't be hard, and you wouldn't lose yeah. anything. Between scenes where characters are just driving and not saying anything, or walking from, like, the yeah, car to the Yeah, they'll show, like, everything and, in real time. Whoa! Yeah. Like, <laughs> everything in real time. If, if it were 80 minutes, I would be like, alright, you know what? Yeah, you could have a double feature of this with the first movie. It's not as good as the first movie. Uh, nothing, there's nothing in it is... Uh, cool is what the first movie does. Uh, but I would be like, you know what? It's it's eight, 80 minutes. Why not? Like, Camille Keaton's back. Camille Keaton's cool. M Mir Zarchi hasn't done anything in a long time. He's back <laughs> doing a proper sequel to his own movie. All right, fine. It's just this 80-minute movie you could be watching. But with it being so long and such a slog to sit through with all of these endless scenes going on, it's like, I can't, 
how could I recommend this to be to like, oh yeah, get some drinks together, have an exploitation movie party, and put this movie on that might put a bunch of people to sleep? Yeah. I for me, if it was eighty minutes, I think I would like it. But yeah, because uh, I I haven't seen the first one in uh only parts of the first yeah, one. Yeah, only you parts saw. of the first one, so mm. uh it wasn't distracting for me. Yeah. Um, but if it was 80 minutes, I'd be like, or 90 minutes, I'd just be like, okay, yeah, I like this. This was cool. Like, you know, I like revenge movies, especially when so it's a I. rape revenge movie. Yeah. No, I like um, that genre a lot. And, uh, yeah, but I could see why if you've seen the first one, you really like the first one, I would say you wouldn't like this. There's tons of other better movies you could watch in that genre. Most of them, yeah, older movies, of course. Like, yeah, I Spit on Your Grave, but also like Thriller, A Cruel Picture, uh, Miss 45. Um, uh, any, some, mod- some more modern ones are better than this. The Brave one was a really good movie. Some of the kills in this were kind of disappointing to me, too. I was just going to say, yeah, mention that. Uh I don't know how spoilery you want me to get. I mean, uh, no, I don't know how many people are going to see the, this. But. The, the original is widely remembered, one, for how long the rape scene is. And also, some of the kills are really good in the original film. In this... Like, the main antagonist is killed by someone else. I was like, oh, well, that kind of... All right. I was expecting this really, like, intense revenge kill over the main antagonist and it was just killed by someone else with like a sh- what, like a stick like yeah or just... like some glass or something like it was yeah they're they're even the death like yeah the movie's really long but even if it was super short the death scenes aren't very memorable like the especially when like, you're comparing it to the first movie the only one where like she shoots a guy in the asshole that was kind of interesting but it went right through the skull somewhere. even that the remake did that better than this movie did yeah. like the remake did something like that with like a shotgun jerry rigged to a guy like coming into the room or something like that i can't remember it was really intricate (laughs) Um, (laughs) yeah yeah most of them like that was probably the most interesting one but i was just expecting like with the main antagonist something really cool no and and, yeah just these people come out of nowhere and just kill uh, for him or for her and i was like well that's kind of yeah Sucks. it's 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 right the motivation behind that didn't make very much sense either like yeah it's, it's i was like, like wait why do what yeah, <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> where'd you come from and why do you hate this person so much but... you know it, it's like i said though i mean kudos for coming back and doing another one like you know yeah. yeah i respect that and hey you know if that was the wishes to make this two and a half hour movie fine like look you know who am I to talk? I made a two and a half hour movie about a hooker with a golden heart. <laughs> um, and it, it, the first movie I did was also like, t- Freak Out was like two hours and 20 minutes and that should have been 80 minutes. <laughs> so who am I to talk? But I mean like, yeah, this should have been way shorter. So, all right. I This movie, uh, I wasn't a fan. Like I, it just, it just needed another pass in the editing room. That's, that's it. Uh, and yeah, there's other things about it that aren't that really aren't very good at all. But just watch the original movie. If it was short, yeah, watch the original. I I, I kind of want to watch the original movie more now. But uh, if you're like me and haven't really seen it, the first one, I guess if it's shorter, I'd say yeah. Uh-huh. But since it's not and it's really long, I'd say mm-hmm. yeah, I wouldn't watch it. Um. But unless you don't mind long movies, but I do so. I like I like long movies. Sometimes but they have if to... it's an epic, like I like Ben Hur or like yeah, the... we went to go see Schindler's List. No, yeah, like those yeah. are fine because yeah, they deserve to be that long. You didn't want Endgame to be three hours. <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to get hate from my opinion on Endgame. <laughs> I'm sorry, wasn't a big fan. <laughs> Would you like better Endgame or I Spit on Your Grave? Deja vu. Like, Endgame was way better. <laughs> but that's not my kind of movie. Uh-huh. I prefer I Spit on Your Grave. You, you liked I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu better than it. You heard it here, folks. No! Quote on, no! Quote on the box cover for I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu, even better than Avengers Endgame, no. says Laura Luke Jones of the CinemaSnob.com. <laughs> You know how much uh, people are gonna hate me? No, no, the, oh my God. the right people will love you for that. No. 
I thought and Avengers it is, Endgame was a better movie than this. This I didn't think was a good movie at objectively, all. Objectively, yes, it was better. Mm-hmm. I oh, think. don't take it back. Ob- Stick to your guns. Objectively, yeah, it's a better made movie, I guess. Uh-huh. But this is more up my alley. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> I'm just going to... <laughs> I just keep digging myself deeper in my hole. Not for huge fans of this movie. You're a, you are the, their savior right now. <laughs> All right, let's oh, get God, to... so many people hate my guts right now. No, 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 no one does. Oh uh, yeah, um, okay. Tell that to all the fanboys out there. Oh no, no, no. It's just, okay. The I spit on your grave fanboys will love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry everyone ah. i'm a disappointment no no you didn't do anything wrong all right let's go to uh super chat and it's okay here. if you like endgame i just want to say that like i'm not judging anyone i that's get why people like it i get it i get why people like it mm. there okay that's not that's not what you said i said i i'm you not really... <laughs> <laughs> i spit on their grave of anyone who likes endgame <laughs> I got this movie kept title dropping itself too. Like I will spit on their graves. I I spit on your husband's grave. Like does this? And then trans- they literally do spit on their grave too. Does this translate differently? Where this is called Day of the Woman, Deja Vu. Uh. I Day of the Woman, your husband. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, there's some. There's some, Nicole. There's some schmutz on Mortis. there. Morton. M. Nicole Mortensen Seven. Thank you so much for the contribution. There's no question in there, but it was. Uh, thank you so much, yeah, for contributing to the super chat. We're gonna take those right now. Mister Snrub asks, "This is a really good I question." I like that name. Because uh, I was thinking about this during the movie as well. He goes, "How does it compare to Return to Sleep Away Camp?" Now, Return to Sleep Away Camp was another movie that was made twenty. That movie was made like twenty some years after. Uh, Sleepaway Camp, this one like 40 years after I spit on your grave, but it was another one where the director, who hadn't really directed anything since Sleepaway Camp, Robert Hiltzik, came back and did uh, a, like a proper sequel to Sleepaway Camp after there was uh, Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 and then kind of 4. Uh, and sort of Son to Sleepaway, Son of Sleepaway Camp. This was like Return to Sleepaway Camp was like a true proper sequel to the first one. And this movie was better. Uh, like, both of them, you could certainly tell they were the same. Like, you could tell Robert Hiltzik did. Like, it, it kind of had a, a sort of similar kind of style that Sleepaway Camp did. But it was rough with a lot of those characters in that movie. Uh, and the kills were kind of... Uh, I remember there being some kind of bad... There was some bad CG that went into some of the kills in that. Like, the, the twist at the end was really, really obvious, and it had a really bad lead character. This one, this one, its its crime is that it's too long, and that it, it, it makes it a huge slog to sit through. But, I mean, overall, there wasn't anything in this one that was as obnoxious as anything in Return to Sleepaway Camp. I mean, Return to Sleepaway Camp was, it was, it was nice in that it was the proper length, I'll give it that. At least I think I don't. Think that movie, I don't think that movie's over two hours. But um, th- this one was better. But n- neither of that good. Uh, Mike Phelan says, uh, um, "I interviewed Jamie A a couple months ago. She's intimidating, even for me." I think that's the actress. <laughs> yeah, that's in this, the daughter yeah. in this movie. Yeah, I, you know what? They did get an actress who maybe she is somehow related. I don't know, but like. They did do a good job of getting an actress who looks like she could be related to uh, Aaron Tabor, uh, Johnny, from the first film. Uh, when they brought that up, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I can kind of, yeah, I can see how they could be related. No, she was good in this. I wonder why she, she was, was so intimidating. I, did, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe she did it at gunpoint. <laughs> the interview ends, she gets him in the crotch with the broken glass bottle. Um... <laughs> Joseph Charlesworth says, would you ever review the remake or the sequels? You should. Yeah, Yeah, I will. I will. I'm going to try to actually see if I can re-upload the Cinema Snob episode on the first film. I'm going to have to do some cutting on it, like that big sketch that's in the middle of it. I'll probably have to cut just for music reasons. Um, But I'll try to get like maybe a version of that uh, uh, thrown up on the site. But... 
I think that's really about all we got for our spit on your grave deja vu. We went 45 minutes. I was hoping we would go the full two and a half hours. No. We we could just do a script reading of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, everyone. I I just shit on Endgame a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) You're fine, buddy. I was about to say, sorry, everyone. I just shit. (laughs) Why would I... (laughs) Why would I tell them that? It's like they would know. Because I would be sitting here going, and then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like Jesus, to wrap honey, this, what'd to you wrap eat? This up. <laughs> oh, that would be you when you know that. <laughs> that would... Anyway. As I drink my hot cup of chili. Mm. All right, well, this Friday, we'll be back Friday. Tune in Friday at 7, where we'll have reviews for the new movies, which is Ugly Dolls. Uh, the Intruder with uh, Dennis Quaid and Longshot, the Charlize Theron and uh, Seth Rogen movie. So that's what we'll be talking about on Friday. I'm still going to try to do some things. I'm still tinkering around with all this. I need to get better lighting and uh, throw up a better background as well. Turns out old bland posters like Windy City and Moment by Moment don't make very good background posters. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I might not use a house house by the cemetery over there. Mm-hmm. All right. So, any final words, honey? Nope. <laughs> That's our final words. I spit on your grave. Deja vu. Nope. <laughs> All right. Later, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>